What's up, ladies and gentlemen, Aklon here, and welcome back to each and every one of you. Of course, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. We're very happy to have you here. Today, we are discussing spoilers, so if you do not want to be spoiled, if you want to approach the story of Dragonflight, fresh, new, wanted launches, now is probably not the right time to keep watching. I would click off if I were you. But it is spoilers mixed with a lot of speculation. Uh, it's to do with the new dungeon, the Ulderman Legacy of Tear dungeon. And there's a very interesting story that is developing here, sort of setting up maybe the end boss of Dragonflight. Now, I made a video, actually, I think a week ago, where I discussed the final boss of uh, Dragonflight, and everything seems to point more and more towards this guy. Now, I, I guess uh, no suspense is necessary here. It is Morazond, or Nosdormu becoming Morazond. Uh, everything seems to point to Morazond being the final boss. So I'm very interested in the story. I love this story, mainly because there's so much that we can speculate on when it comes to the creation of Morazond, the creation of Nosdormu, what exactly led to this. So we're going to discuss all of this, and I'm going to give you some of the spoilers from the dungeon, and then we'll do some speculation in between. Remember, you can be one of the cool people on the screen right now, simply by clicking the links in the description down below, becoming a patron, a YouTube member, and remember to join us over on Twitch live. Links are in the description down below. Now, I want to ask you guys first, before we begin, if you believe that Morazond will indeed be the final boss of the expansion, you hit the like button. If you don't, you hit the dislike button, you tell me in the comment section down below why you think I'm lying. All right, we've got a deal. This way I'll get to see exactly how many people agree with me and how many people think, nah, bro, it's going to be someone else. So, I can't wait to fucking read that. And with that said, let's uh, jump into it. So during Ulderman, the rework of Ulderman Dungeon, Legacy of Tear, uh, after the fourth boss, the infinite dragonflight actually invades, and we meet Chrono Lord Deos. Chrono Lord Dr Deos is an infinite dragon, and he is in search of a disc. Uh, the particulars of this disc is unknown. We do know one thing, though. The disc is located inside the chambers of Tyr, and this disc apparently holds the secret to creating aspects, or at least for the aspects to get their power back. Now, Deus does not want us to have this, and the reason Deus doesn't want us to have this is he believes that the one and only aspect is Morazond and that all of the other aspects must be killed and must be replaced by Morazond. Now, I'll, gu I'll give you guys a little bit here, uh, foresight or a bit of spoiler here. We lose. Uh, we do not get to kill him. But there's some interesting lines here, some interesting voice lines that uh, I'll read to you now. So when we first meet Chrono Lord Deos, he says, What have we here? Alexstrasza's lapdogs, I suspect. I fear I will have to deny your queen her prize. The disc you seek will be mine. Then, before the fight, he says, The disc may hold the secret to the aspects regaining their power, and we cannot allow that to happen. Now, the disc is lost to time, just as you are about to be. So he actually destroys the disc before we even fight. And then, obviously, as we know, he escapes through a portal. He says, your efforts are impressive, but in vain. The timelines are converging. converging. There will be only one aspect, and Morazond shall be infinite. This is some interesting stuff. Very interesting because, and this is where we get into the speculation, for those of you that don't know the story of Morazond, how does Morazond actually come into creation? Now, this is not the first time we've actually faced Morazond. We faced Morazond at the End Time Dungeon, where we defeated him, thereby stopping at least one of the timelines where Nosdormu becomes Morazond. Nosdormu tells us as much. He says, you stopped me this time and I am grateful. But as the cycle continues and repeats itself, 
this shall happen again. So how exactly does this happen? Or maybe first, let me read you exactly what Nostormu tells us. At last, it has come to pass. The moment of my demise. The loop is closed. My future self will cause no more harm. Still, in time, I will fall to madness. And you, Yeros, will vanquish me. The cycle will repeat. So it goes. What matters is that Azeroth did not fall, that we survive to fight another day. And Asdormu then turns around and looks at the hourglass of time and says, All that matters is this moment. Now, before we get into anything else, let me quickly explain, just very briefly, how exactly this happens. So, there is a future. When Nosdormu became the aspect of time, as all of the other aspects, they received great power, but also a curse. So, every single one of the aspects suffers as much as they are powerful. For Deathwing, we know that as soon as he became the Earth Warder, it felt as if every pebble, every rock on Azeroth was pushing down on him, leaving him in a considerable amount of pain at all times. This is what it meant for him to be the Earth Warder. For Nosdormu, this was madness, or at least teetering on the brink of madness at all times. And the reason for it is, he sees all futures. He sees the timelines for what they are. This is why the Bronze Dragonflight has the ability to manipulate the timelines. They have the ability to travel between timelines. The issue with this is, in the moment Nostormu became the aspect of time, he saw his own Death. He saw exactly how it will happen, and he saw what will happen. A binary choice. Either he accepts his death, or he becomes Morazond. We, are, we already know that in some timelines, he did become Morazond and did succeed. How do we know this? Because the infinite dragonflight is his creation. They serve Morazond and only Morazond. What does the Infinite Dragonflight want? The destruction of all timelines, the destruction of all aspects, and the one true aspect, Morazond, the infinite aspect. That's what they want. We know this because during the Chromie scenario, we actually had to stop the Infinite Dragonflight from destroying the timelines because this was leaving Chromie weaker and weaker and weaker. Of course, this would increase the strength of Morazond as he is the infinite aspect. Now, how exactly does this work? And this is where we get into uh, some speculation. The problem that I have with this immediately is Nostormu knows that if he tries to resist the moment of his death, he shall become Morazond. That's literally how the turn happens. He resists, he refuses to die, and then he becomes Morazond. Now, we know that Nostormu is against this. This is why Nostormu thanks us for stopping Morazond. He does not want to become Morazond. So, th the truth here is it's simple. He simply needs to accept his death, and then we never need to worry about it. But what if the reason he became Morazond is because of something he saw at the moment of his death? So right now, the way that Nostorum is looking at it, and, and I'm, I'm going to use a very rudimentary way of trying to explain this because I myself don't quite know what words to use here. So right now, from what I can tell, Nostormu can see the future up until his own demise. And then he sees nothing further. He sees himself either dying or becoming Morazond. But once he becomes Morazond, he does not see past that point because that is not him. He first needs to change in order to see what happens past that point. There is a moment during the end time dungeon where Morazond says this after we defeat him. Morazond says, You know not what you have done. Amanthol, what I have seen. 
you know not what you have done. This has happened so many times with the beings that we defeat on Azeroth. That I get most of you will just go, yeah, Aklon, but they always have to have a big bad. That's why they do it. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in the real world explanation for why it happens. We are talking from a lore perspective here. Nazoth, Yogg-Saron, Sargeras, Zuval. Each of the enemies that we defeat constantly warn us that what we did was wrong. That we failed to see the truth of what is happening. Morazan says, you know not what you have done. And then he speaks to Amanthal. And he says, what I have seen. This suggests to me that the reason Nosdormu turns into Morazan is because in the moment of his death, Nosdormu sees a vision, the future. What happens when I die? And that future is horrendous. That future is horrific. This is why Nosdormu then stops his death, evades his death, and becomes Morazond. And now Morazond works tirelessly to destroy the different timelines of the universe and bring all timelines into a singular timeline, otherwise giving in to the madness, as it were. What is it that Morazan could possibly see? Was the use of Amunthul here simply because Amunthul is the one that blessed him with the ability to see time? Or is Amunthul an integral part of the vision that Morazan saw? This I do not know, but I do have speculation for it. In my video about Rathian and the Black Dragon aspects and the Drakthir, that video should be available, I think, the day before this one, so maybe yesterday you would have watched this video. If I'm not mistaken, this video should release tomorrow from the moment that I'm recording it, which means today will be the Rathian one that, that launches. But in the Rathian one, I dive into the possibility that Deathwing was not wrong, that the reason Deathwing created the Drakthir was ultimately to stop the dragon aspects. Because Deathwing becoming the Earth Warder immediately had a connection to Azeroth and saw what the Titans and the aspects were doing to Azeroth, the enslavement of Azeroth by these beings in order to keep the universe in check in order to keep power effectively and i've made multiple videos on that it would be way too long to jump into each of these speculation theories because they do actually count numerous at this point uh, but all you really need to know for the purposes of this video is that azeroth in my opinion is a being of immeasurable power, but she is not a titan. She is not part of the titans, nor is she wholly part of our galaxy. But Azeroth was enslaved by the titans in order to keep the system going. The system that we see when we reach the Shadowlands. Life, death, death, life, the constant cycle. Azeroth was enslaved in order to keep this cycle going. This is why Zuval tried to kill Azeroth, because if he could not free her, then he shall kill her. But with as long as Azeroth is there, the cycle cannot be broken, and for whatever reason, that cycle seems to feed something even more powerful than anything that we face so far. And this is what I believe Morazond most likely sees when he becomes Morazond, when he finally turns from Nosdormu into Morazond. He sees this future, and this future scares the living shit out of him. This is why he literally finds the infinite dragonflight. Now, what's even more interesting, and I'll do this as sort of just a final word of, 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 of speculation, the disc, the disc that we are seeking that holds the secret to the aspects regaining their power, what could that possibly be? And now that that disc is lost, is the secrets lost as well? Or are we going to find more ar uh, artifacts and archives that maybe lead to this rediscovery of that secret? Maybe... 
the aspect it's interesting to me that the aspects themselves do not know how to regain their power that is quite interesting to me as well anyways i'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below do you think that Morazond is just a bad guy, just an evil guy, and should be defeated? We should stop him at all costs? Or do you think there might be some truth to my speculation theories? Let me know in the comment section down below. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for watching. If your name is on the screen right now, that means you're a patron, a YouTube member. So thank you so much for that support. If you want to be one of the cool people, just hit the links in the description down below. Also remember to join us over on Twitch. All of the links in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, be kind to each other. Be good to each other. And I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam.